I woke up, drenched in water, not knowing what to do. I started writing about what happened as soon as I could, so that if anyone found my journal, they would know my full story. After that, I began to walk, pulled out my camera, and took a picture. I was nervous. There was a slight breeze coming through the tunnel. Didn't know where it was coming from. It must have meant that it ended somewhere, to an outside, but I would end up never knowing. I felt fear, guilt, sadness, and most of all, clueless. I still don't know how far the tunnel goes, but I began to walk. I ran across a door that said 527. I carefully opened it, slowly. I saw a sort of beach and a sign. It said Veranda. I closed the door and walked away. Soon after that, I came across a door with the number 95. I tried to open it, but it wouldn't budge. I tried to kick it, and soon realized that wasn't a good idea. I moved on and walked for around 20 minutes, until I came to another door. I then realized that these numbers were the numbers of the levels on the other side of the doors. It was obvious they weren't in order, so I had no system or pattern to make, no structure. I saw the number 448. It opened. And inside, I saw a normal looking house. It was dark, but in the end I chose not to enter, mainly because of what I heard. I heard a child laughing. Not giggling like children do, but laughing. I was fully disturbed and walked for around 30 more seconds when I came across level 447. I walked up to it and heard the sound of an organ playing through the door. I twisted the handle and the door opened. The sound got louder, but it wasn't deafening. I debated whether to go in or not. I decided that I would walk until I saw another door, compare the two and go in whichever one seemed safer. I ended up walking until I saw a door with the number negative 237. I opened it and instantly got a migraine. I closed it and started walking to 447. Level negative 237 from what I could see was a forest with a sort of pink hue to it. My eyes started burning after I closed the door. It felt like I just stared into the sun for five minutes when all I did was look at a level for five seconds. I think it might have been radiation. I've heard some effects of exposure to radiation can cause symptoms like that. Anyway, I decided to go to level 447, and I do not regret it. As soon as I entered the level, my ears started ringing, and I plugged them. I could feel the inside of my ears vibrating and chose to simply keep my ears plugged. The music eventually stopped. I had heard it before in my life, but I cannot recall the name of the piece. I'm sure it would have been almost beautiful, if not for the overwhelming volume. Previously, when I was outside the level, it wasn't that bad. But inside, with pipes surrounding me at every possible angle, it was maddening. It was also claustrophobic. And, like I said, I'm not a guy who gets claustrophobic. The music had not been playing for around 20 minutes, and then another song came on. It was another song I've heard before. At the time, I assumed that it only played songs that I know I've heard at some point in my life but can't remember. That seemed to be the only theme, other than the tiny repeating tunnels and halls I had walked through. 
It's been around six hours since I was in that level. And I remember the second I left, everything was silent for around ten minutes. I thought this was a property of the level that I'm currently in, but sound eventually came back to me. I'll explain my exit of the level briefly. I had not seen any entities. The level was somewhat safe, so when I saw a wooden pipe that had an opening wide enough to fit through, I decided to go in. Before, I had not come across any exits, and I wanted to leave that level mainly because of the volume of it. So I decided to go down the wooden pipe, and I fell. After I was done falling, I woke up on a couch. The couch was in a room, and next to me sat a figure. A figure with no features. It appeared to be sentient. It looked like a 3D shadow. I stayed sitting on the couch, and when I opened my eyes, it looked in my direction. I hadn't moved anything but my eyelids. I don't know how it knew I was awake. It gives off a certain vibe. Not a dangerous one, per se. In fact, it's somewhat comforting. But at the same time, it's disturbing. We sat on the couch. Around me was a type of old house. It wasn't decayed, but it felt abandoned. To my left was an old television, and across from me, another couch, with a table between. To my right, a fireplace, and also the entity. There were stairs to my left, past the television, and to the right of the stairs was a hallway that I believe leads to the bathroom. I'm still on the couch, writing this, and I've taken a picture to clarify my explanation. The entity has not spoken to me or moved other than to look at me every time I move. It's quite unsettling, but I hope he's friendly, or at least non-violent. I'm going to try and get up. I really have to go to the bathroom, and I just hope he doesn't kill me when I move from the couch. For now, though, this is Aiden, signing off. Oh, and if you don't see anything past this, that means I'm probably dead. Alright, so I'm alive, but I'm scared I'm going to be dead any day now. I'm hearing movement in the attic. It's not human. It's sporadic and unpredictable. I know what level I'm in. Level negative 188. I know this because I have previously seen it through a painting. The level is named Cabin Amidst the Freezing Cold, and it was a level of interest that I marked down in my journal. It's weird to go back in my journal and see all the stuff I've been through. Crazy how far I've gotten. But I feel like there's still a ways to go. Anyway. It's freezing. Like, actually freezing. The wood is frozen solid. But, in a way, it's providing protection from the winds that might get through the cracks in the walls. Outside is a snowy, icy, and dense forest. I looked back at the picture I took of this level before, and I remember seeing the figure in the window. Now, I know what it was. I have looked around the house, and the only possible exit I've seen is the attic. I will not be going through there, ever. I would rather starve to death. Saying that though, there is a kitchen here, with stove and a fridge. Both of them function well, but there's no point to that if you don't have food to cook or store. There is a basement as well, but I doubt it's an exit, because it's just a single room with a laundry machine and books. When I first went in there, there was snow everywhere, but the next day I went down, it was all gone. The water, the snow, the ice was all cleaned up. It was the figure who did it. I have noticed some things about him. I have chosen not to provoke him in any way because he's powerful. I just stay out of his way 
And he seems to not be bothered by anything I do. Well, there is one thing. I was looking around the house for exits when I opened the front door. I fully expected it to be frozen shut, but it opened quite easily. I looked behind me. He wasn't there. I began to step out just to see the surroundings, and he grabbed my shoulder and pulled me back. The door closed on its own, and I have not felt very safe around him since. Right now, he's not here. He's outside. Not sure what he's doing, but he's too far for me to see. I'm not going to attempt to open the door in fear for my life, but I've been hearing some noises in the basement, so I'm going to go down there and check. I know it sounds stupid, but I have a feeling that it's not. Anyway, this is Aiden, signing off. I began to walk down the stairs into the basement, slowly approaching the doorway. Some things had fallen onto the floor. I picked them up and felt the sense of wanting to know why they were here. I examined them closer, but... I didn't have enough time to fully appreciate the items. Instead, I saw movement in the corner of my eye. I looked over at a speed which I didn't know I could go, and I saw a cat. It looked like a normal cat, but it was white, snow white. It got on its back and looked at me curiously. I was shocked, to say the least. It was an actual cat. I haven't seen anything resembling animal life other than the crows on level 10 and the spiders on level 8. I very slowly approached it, and it seemed unwavered by my actions. I was just as curious as it was. I rubbed its belly, and I didn't really have a problem with it, so I tried to pick it up and it didn't like that. It hissed and I backed away. I went back upstairs and not two minutes later, the cat came upstairs as well. I started playing with it and I began to grow tired. When I was about to doze off while playing with the cat, the handle on the front door twisted and the door opened. Through the door came the figure. He saw that I was playing with the cat and he laughed. The weird thing was, no sound came from his mouth, but I could see a type of grin grow on his face, even though there was no features. It's hard to explain, but he didn't seem bothered by my actions with the cat. I didn't know if it was his cat or if the cat just came around the house every so often. It went over to him and rubbed itself across his legs. I noticed he had winter clothes on. I had seen them before, but I never really understood it until I thought of him as a human. When the cat rubbed itself on his legs, he gently bent down and started petting it. The cat began to purr, and it was odd. I felt like he was just another person, and that cat was just a cat. It didn't really feel like the back rooms. If there wasn't an infinite snowy forest outside the house, I would have believed it to be real life. Also, the fact that he isn't human. He just has human emotions. For the sake of explanation, I'm going to name him John. Over John's shoulder was a deer. A completely mature and male deer, and he was just carrying it over his shoulder. I was impressed, to say the least. He went to the kitchen, and in the kitchen is a door. Through that door, a greenhouse type room where he skins the animals he gets. This is what we eat. It was the first meal I had ever since I entered the level. 
Sometimes John just stares at me. I feel like he's trying to communicate with me somehow, but I can't hear him, and he doesn't make any sounds. It's like he's trapped in a different dimension, but I can still see him. I feel bad for him. He seems to just be alone in a house covered in snow and ice. He's like superhuman, though. Every trait I have, he just has a better version of. I've noticed that when he isn't in the house, the noises in the attic are very loud, but when he is home, it's very quiet. I'm not sure if the noises in the attic are entities, so I might just peek my head through tomorrow, just to see. But I want to do it when John is home at least, just to have a layer of safety in case anything happens. For now though, this is Aiden, signing off. Okay. Things have happened. I'm not in the best mental state to write. I just... I, I, I couldn't wait any longer to explain what happened. I'm not going to explain yet. This is just a small update. Just know that if the journal ends here, it means I'm dead. 100%. Anyway, this is Aiden, signing off. Alright, I think I've calmed down, but I need to get this off my chest and into this journal. I'm having nightmares every night of what happened. I'm no longer in that freezing cabin somewhere else entirely, but that's for another time. I need to get this off my mind and onto these pages. It all began when I decided to look in the attic. I had waited for John to come home, and I tried to open it, but before I could even grab the handle, John was grabbing my wrist and staring into my eyes with his featureless face. It was obvious he didn't want me going in there, or even opening it for that matter. I knew that he had to be storing entities up there. For what reason? No idea. But it was undeniable. That's definitely what he was doing. He didn't want them getting out. Either that, or he didn't want me going in. I went to bed that night pondering of what could possibly be up there, what was right above me. Was it a skin terror? A happy face? A bundle of arms and legs? It could be anything. And that's why I didn't fall asleep, because my imagination didn't allow it. After the sun came up, I finally started to doze off because the sun gave me a sense of security, not sure why. I took a nap that probably lasted a few hours if I had to guess, and made my way downstairs to begin writing about what happened. Although I didn't get the chance, right before I was about to write in my journal, John came through the door with something in his hand. I noticed he threw what seemed to be a crumpled up piece of paper in the trash can. When he went to the greenhouse, I went to the trash can and grabbed what he threw in. It was a paper. A paper written by the MUG. I was shocked and also relieved. I would finally be able to understand what the level was. At the time, I wanted to read it so bad. But I knew if he caught me reading it, he wouldn't like it. So I waited until nighttime. He fell asleep and I went up to my room with the paper in hand. I unfolded and unwrinkled it and began to read. The important parts of it 
I will write here. The entity of level negative 188 is a fully black male, humanoid dressed in winter clothing. It is unknown whether it owns the cabin or not. While the entity is present, it dusts and cleans the cabin, as well as restocks the food in the fridge. It will likely completely ignore any wanderers in the cabin, but will prevent them from opening any doors or windows leading outside, and may even prepare some hot chocolate for them. The reason for this behavior is most likely because it considers humans as guests. It should be noted that if you attempt to attack the entity out of curiosity or fear, it will calmly stop you and guide you to the couch. However, if you attack it for entertainment, it will retaliate. It is strongly discouraged to attempt an attack on the entity, because it possesses the ability to send someone to a random level. Another part of the page said this, the snowstorm in level negative 188 significantly amplifies the 240 effect present in level 240. When a wanderer exits the cabin, they are exposed to the full force of the snowstorm, intensifying the influence of the 240 effect. This effect, originally documented in level 240, progressively and harshly deteriorates the wanderer's mental state, turning them into a wretch. I don't know what a wretch is, but the paper said something interesting. It said that the entity keeps wretches in the attic, and it is highly advised against going into the attic, as you will most certainly be killed. The paper also told me the entrances and exits of the level. Entering a large horizontally positioned wooden pipe on level 447 will lead you here. That was how I entered the level, through the large wooden pipe and the organ level. It also named some exits. The one that stood out to me was this. Sing to the entity and get it to fall asleep. The room will fill up with light and you will find yourself on a safe level. The reason why this happens is likely because the entity seems overworked and puts a lot of effort into taking care of this level without a break. I instantly knew what I had to do. If I stayed here, on this level, and went insane... The entity would put me in that attic, and I would not be able to escape. I had to leave, and that was my safest way out, is to sing to John. I planned all night as to how I would get him on the couch, or what song he may like, if I should bring the cat or not. I thought about it and went to bed. When I woke up the next day, I found him downstairs, already on the couch. This was perfect. I sat down on the couch across from him and began to hum one of the songs I heard in the organ level. It was actually working. I continued to hum it and he started to doze off. I noticed the TV getting brighter. I looked over at it while still humming and noticed the lights above me getting brighter. Then the snow outside began to glow even whiter. And that's all I remember. I woke up in a new level. Well, new as in not the cabin. I woke up in the hub. Yes, for the second time in a week. I left a level, went into two different levels, and went back to the level I started at. I was in the hub. And I was very confused. When I woke up, it felt like I had been dreaming. But I knew I wasn't due to the fact that I still had the paper of level negative 188. At that moment, I decided that I would not just settle for a somewhat safe level. I needed to be completely comfortable with my choice. If it wasn't obviously safe, then there would be no chance of entering. So, I began to walk. I was mainly looking for numbers that I recognized, like 0 through 10 or 29. And surprisingly, I found just that. I saw a door with a number 9 on it and walked up to it. I slowly put my hand on the handle 
I knew that I wasn't going in it, but I wanted to take a look, just to confirm my number on the door theory. I slowly began to twist it. At first, I thought it was locked, but then the door opened suddenly and jolted me forward. Luckily, I caught myself before I went in, but I was confused as to what opened the door so fast. Although, when I looked down the street and felt vibrations on the ground, I knew what it was. A legged watcher. That was what yanked the door off and was about to enter the hub. I instantly started running and settled on the next door that I would end up seeing. The watcher was now in the hub and started chasing after me. It was terrifying. My heart was beating so fast and he was gaining. No matter what the next level was, I had to go in. The watcher was too close. Just had to pray the next door wouldn't be locked. The thumps kept getting closer, and I knew it was speeding up. This thing could go 80 miles an hour. No way I could keep this up. I had to find a door. I found a door, but didn't have time to look at what the number was. The watcher was about 30 feet away when I answered the level. I got away with my life. But... I would soon realize that I might again lose it. I woke up on a hospital type floor. My ears were ringing with the sounds of alarms in the background. I felt like I knew where I was, but I didn't want to believe it. There were blaring alarms and red flashing lights surrounding me. Then I heard it. The all too familiar scream that I hear in my nightmares. The same screaming I heard when I first came across this level in level 29. I had vowed never to enter it, under any circumstances, but that vow was broken, and now I had to pay the price. The level I found myself in was exclamation point. In other words, run for your life.